British billionaire Richard Branson was once quoted saying, records are made to be broken. It is in man's nature to continue to strive to do just that. Branson is most known for his business ventures linked to his Virgin brand. Richard has set seven world records according to the Guinness Book of World Records and is always striving for more. His first record in 1986 was hitting the fastest time crossing the Atlantic Ocean in a boat that cost $1.5 million. At 63 years old, he set the record of four-person kite surfing. So, this man knows a thing or two about setting and breaking impossible records. To all you kids down there, I was once a child with a dream. The NBA throughout its history is full of insane records constantly changing hands. Records that many thought were impossible to break. But what about those records that just seem to have been locked in a vault and the commissioner threw away the key? The records that are bulletproof due to the evolving nature of basketball, including the significant rule changes and focuses on player health and load management. We are talking about the NBA records that won't ever be broken. How do you not start with the walking record book, Wilt Chamberlain? He has so many records, it makes you feel they had to make a volume two record book just to fit all his records inside. Take a look at this long list of 72 records set by this NBA legend. Wilt Chamberlain was a titan among boys during his time in the league. But let's focus on those seemingly bulletproof records I discussed. In the 1961-1962 season, Wilt Chamberlain averaged playing 48.5 minutes per game. I think I know what you're thinking. But Mr. Thunderslams, there's only 48 minutes in an NBA game. Yes, there are only 48 minutes in a game, but his average included games that went into overtime. Wilt that season played at least 48 minutes in 79 of 80 games. Then he played more than 50 minutes in seven games that season. He only missed eight possible minutes of a game the whole season. I asked him how long he'd like to play. He said, I never get tired. And I said, you'll play all the games. He said, yes. Due to recent league focus on player health and load management, it seems very unlikely a player will ever even come close to this record. Even if there was a player willing to risk their body in that amount of playing time, a coach wouldn't be willing to lose their job over this record. So you can all but lock that one away. Another ridiculous Wilt record is one he acquired that same season when he averaged 50.4 points per game. In the current NBA, a 50-point game for a player is a spectacle. It brings excitement and people talk about it for weeks to come. Could you imagine if the same player did that every single game? Last season saw a huge spike in scoring surges where 15 players combined for 25 50-point games. All the players in the league accounted for 30% of what Wilt averaged on his own. Just insanity! Previously discussed in our scoring record video, you can also put his 100 points in a single game record on that seemingly unbreakable list. Wilt also once pulled down 55 rebounds in a game. The thing I remember most about the 55 rebounds is that when the game was over, that I was probably more tired than I've ever been in my entire life. The closest anyone has been to that mark in the last 30 years was in 1996 when Charles Barkley pulled down 33 rebounds. Wilt was also part of the 1972 Lakers team that set the record for the most consecutive wins in a row with 33 wins. That really shows the magnitude of how crazy Wilt's feats truly were. Two players who were able to set impressive records like Wilt due to their endurance and ability to stay healthy were A.C. Green and Robert Parrish. Parrish holds the record for the most career games played at 1,611 games. He also holds the record for the most points without a career three-pointer made, which that record is also impressive. Even notably bad shooters like Ben Wallace and Shaquille O'Neal have accidentally made one or two. A.C. Green is the Cal Ripken Jr. Ironman of the NBA. He played a consecutive 1,192 games. In his second NBA season, he missed three games due to injury. After those three games, he never missed a single game again. I hope he was able to cash in on all his accumulated sick time at the end of his career. Another record that seems crazy, but also makes you scratch your head, is the lowest scoring game of all time. On November 22nd, 1950, the Fort Wayne Pistons beat the Minneapolis Lakers 19 to 18. George Mikan was the game's leading scorer because he scored 15 of the Lakers' 18 points. This game happened before the NBA implemented the shot clock. Before the creation of the shot clock, teams would hold tea parties and sing kumbaya in between shooting the basketball. 
which, if you're holding good tea parties, it can take a lot of time and not leave any time left to score points. On the opposite end of the spectrum, in 1983, the Pistons beat the Nuggets 186 to 184. This was the highest scoring game of all time at 370 combined points. These two teams were some of the best offenses in the league that season, and the game went into triple overtime. The weirdest part about this game was the two teams combined for only two made three-point shots. The next highest scoring game to this was a 2023 game between the Kings and Clippers. The Kings bested the Clippers 176 to 175, which was a combined score of 351 points. With a score like that, do the players work hard for their money or not work hard for their money? Because there was no defense. I really don't know. Hmm. I know a group of men who did earn their money though. On the fateful night of April 9th, 1990, the group of referees for the Jazz vs. Suns game worked very hard. This was the night the Utah Jazz set the record for the most personal fouls by a team in a single game with 52 fouls. The Suns had 32 fouls that night as well. That's 84 fouls between the two teams. Just sit back and imagine being at this game. Just whistle after whistle after whistle. Makes you want to make sure the referees didn't check themselves into the local hospital with the black lung. Four Jazz players fouled out of the game. Two players had five fouls, four players had four apiece, and the final player had two fouls. To say the least, the Jazz lost the game due to those insanely high foul numbers. The Phoenix Suns set the record for the most free throws made in a single game with 61 that night. The Suns alone attempted 80 free throws. Even though this was a playoff game, there might have been more people in the crowd sleeping than free throws attempted. Three of the Utah Jazz players in that record-setting night also hold unbreakable individual records of their own. Carl Malone was very talented on the offensive side of the ball, but always found himself in trouble with the referees. He holds the record of the most career technical fouls with 332. Mark Eaton was one of the best shot blockers in NBA history. He set a towering record by averaging 5.6 blocks per game in the 1984-1985 season. Eaton had 456 blocks that year. In the current NBA, where more than one-third of the shots are being shot beyond the three-point line, it leaves less opportunity for even the best shot blockers to complete such a task consistently. The most impressive record holder on that team was John Stockton, who owns the career assist and career steals record. On the career assist list, Stockton leads number two Jason Kidd by almost 4,000 assists. Stockton played 19 seasons in the NBA and only missed 22 possible games during his career. That's 1,504 regular season games while averaging over 10 assists per game. Can I have the honor of locking that record away? Or would you like to? Thanks. Mark Eaton was a very impressive defensive talent and shot blocker, but he's only fourth on the career blocks list. The person atop that list is Hakeem Olajuwon at 3,830 blocks. That record seems doable until you find out that second on that list is Dikembe Mutombo at 3,289. Dikembe is closer to ninth place than first. Hakeem averaged over three blocks per game in his 18-year career. He was the dream shot blocker. See what I did there? Another unbreakable record holder that you're not going to see on any blocks list with a whopping 39 blocks in his 14-year career. We're talking about Muggsy Bogues. Muggsy was 5'3 and the shortest player in NBA history. He had a very successful 14-year career in the league. He was known for his court vision, quickness, and surprising defensive ability. With the league getting bigger and bigger each year, it's very unlikely to see an NBA player like Muggsy again. Here's a record that you hope to never see broken again. Ish Smith has played for a record 13 NBA teams. Him hitting thir Before him hitting 13, four different players had played for 12 teams. Jim Jackson, Tony Massenburg, Joe Smith, and Chucky Brown apparently believe in the unlucky number 13 superstition. But Ish didn't care. He grabbed that record and took it by the balls. Uh, Milwaukee. Phoenix. Yeah. Ah, uh, dang, where'd I go from Phoenix? Listening to him name the teams he's played for is like Wilt Chamberlain trying to name any of the 20,000 girls he slept with, which I hope is another unbreakable NBA record. The most recent historic record breakers are Steph Curry and LeBron James.
Stephen Curry, known as the igniter of the NBA three-point revolution, in 2021 became the all-time leader in career three-pointers made. He passed Ray Allen's total record of 2,973. Steph, now in his 15th season, is currently at 3,719 and counting. He's not letting up anytime soon and will make that record very difficult for anyone to try to break in the future. Then there's LeBron James. What do you say about this guy? He's the type of player the league may never see again. LeBron is in his 21st season and may not be throwing in the towel anytime soon, especially with him constantly voicing his hopefulness of joining his sons on the NBA floor. February 7, 2023, LeBron passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's all-time scoring record of 38,387 points, which before LeBron, it seemed like that record was safe forever. Then, March 2, 2024, LeBron passed 40,000 career points, obviously becoming the first player in NBA history to pass that milestone. Now at 40,304 points and counting, it seems that record will be as good as safe. Think about it this way. This season's leading scorer is Luka Doncic. He has 10,892 points in his career 382 games played. Currently 25 years old, Luka would need to average 30 points per game and play in all 82 games of the next 12 seasons to pass LeBron James at 40,000 points. That's pretty crazy to think about. The King also holds the record for the most career points in the playoffs. He's currently at 8,023. That's more than 2,000 more than second place, which is Michael Jordan at 5,987. LeBron James started in his 20th consecutive All-Star game this year, which is another crazy record he holds. Additionally, he holds the record for the most 20-plus point performances, currently at 1,231. Then, just yesterday, LeBron passed Michael Jordan for the most 30-point games in NBA history. Records for LeBron seem to be like Pokemon for Ash. He's out there trying to catch them all. But as the famous saying goes, records are meant to be broken, and you can never say never. It's hard to imagine these records won't always stand the test of time. But with so much growing talent from all different places of the world, we are always waiting for that next player that truly blows us away and pushes away any age-old expectations going forward. Thanks for joining us on this thrilling journey through the NBA records that won't ever be broken.